Well, hey everyone, Jason here at Alorium Technology. And in this video, we're gonna go back to the topic of motion control using FPGAs and why FPGAs are a great solution for doing things like servos, steppers, BLDCs, or regular DC motors. We're gonna focus specifically on this one on servos using this platform called Hexi, the Hexapod from Arcbotics. If you wanna check them out, you can go to arcbotics.com slash product slash Hexi and learn more about this. It's a, a, a really nice little Hexapod that we bought and it comes actually, you can see up here, it says 19 servos. One is for being able to kind of turn the, the head. Um, that one's not hooked up in our case. We're just using the legs. So there are three servos per leg, six legs. It gets you the 18 servos. And this is what Hexi looks like as it's sitting on my desk. It's just sitting on top of a box. And so we're not actually gonna be moving it around like walking across the floor or anything like that because for videoing, it's just easier to have it stay put. So we actually have it lifted off its legs. And in the background there, you can see this is when I had it connected to one of our snowboards. But you'll also see back here a particle argon board. And I'm gonna be using that to generate some interrupts to help sort of disturb what's going on on the microcontroller as it's trying to control these servos. I've got a Blink app running on my iPhone and I call it the Hexi Interrupter. And it's just got a, one simple switch on it and that's hooked up through Wi-Fi or connected via Wi-Fi and that's gonna be talking to the argon. Now, when I turn that on, the argon is gonna generate interrupts into the snowboard. And we've got a very simple interrupt service routine defined that actually is, it's just creating this arbitrary delay. And you'll see down here that it's creating a delay of 50 microseconds. Now, to be fair, that's an awfully long time for an interrupt service routine to take to do anything. But keep in mind that really the idea of this demonstration is to show that, that you can add really unreasonable delays or disruption to the microcontroller and still have it work just fine in terms of controlling the servos when you're controlling it from the FPGA. So we're going to do that with the snowboard. And of course, we're going to do that with the do. And we'll show you what that looks like doing with the mega as well. We're going to start by looking at the Arduino mega. And the first thing I'll do is kind of talk you through the sequence that Hexi goes through when we do this. So if I reset it, it goes through a sequence of really three moves. This first one I call around the Hexi. And it's basically just going along and moving all six of the legs, you know, moving them up and putting them down just so we can kind of see that everything's working. Then it moves into this standing position, which is just simply putting all the legs in what would be a, a stand up position. And it's going to hold this for a period of time. The next thing it'll do is move into what I like to call the shoulder shrug. And this is just a way for it to work itself around and kind of it's similar to around the hexi maneuver, although it's pivoting that sort of top shoulder joint, if you will. Although you'll notice as it comes to this one uh, that that shoulder joint isn't working on the, I guess, front right leg. That's because that servo motor kind of burnt out on me and uh, didn't have time to replace that until, you know, before making this video. So we're just going to live with that for the video. The final move is what I call settle. And it kind of goes into that, putting the, the legs straight out and just holding that in position. So keeping those servos in that position for a period of time. Now that's walking through all of those moves without any interrupts. So now that we're going back through, let's fire up some interrupts here. So if I turn those on, you'll see immediately what happens is you'll see that jittering on the legs, you know, kind of all around Hexi, you'll see those different joints. If I turn it off, you'll see it stop. There is a little bit of a delay here between turning it on and off as it takes about a second or so for it to kind of do that loop through Wi-Fi and through the Blink server. Um, but the response is pretty quick. So now as we go kind of around that shoulder shrug, you'll see again the jittering that's taking place there as it's moving itself around. If I turn it back off, that'll stop. So it's pretty consistent, you know, and, and actually the Mega does a pretty nice job of controlling these servos in general. Uh, but of course, when we interject this service or this ISR by sending these interrupts, we do definitely see the twitching and the jittering that can take place. So that's kind of what it looks like on the Mega. And you can definitely see it when you move into this position where it's trying to just hold the legs straight out. While those interrupts are enabled, it really jitters and twitches quite a lot. If we turn them off, you'll see a really rapid end to that jittering and we turn them back on and it, it kicks in pretty well. So that's what it looks like on the Mega. Let's take a look at the do. The first thing we'll do is reset it and we're gonna get it to jump into that initial sequence where it goes around the hexi like this and it'll go back around the other way and then it's going to kick into a stand position and then it's going to go from you know stand to the shoulder shrug to the settling position now the reason that i wanted to show this with the do is because the do is running a cortex m3 uh, and one of the comments that we frequently will hear when it comes to moving some of this performance or some of this functionality to fpga is well why don't you just move to a larger microcontroller and sometimes that is enough to solve the problem for sure and there's no doubt 
that the Cortex M series are very capable microcontrollers, a lot of power. Um, you can run them a lot faster and they're, they're really powerful. But even then, moving to something like controlling 18 servos all at once, you can overload it if you give the processor enough to do. So let's jump in and look and see what that looks like, even with running a Cortex M3 and on the Arduino Do once we start sending it interrupts. Okay, we are done with the initial sequence with no interrupts. Now we will go ahead and enable these and see what happens. So once we enable interrupts, even with the do, you can see that there's quite a bit of jitter when it's servicing those interrupts on the microcontroller. So as we move into the shoulder shrug, again, if we kind of turn it on and off as it's moving through this sequence, you can see the difference between the interrupts being on and the interrupts being off. And as soon as you turn them on, you can see those that jitter start to come back and it has a hard time just keeping up with the PWM signaling to the, to the servos. Once again, when we move into this subtle position, the jitter becomes very, very obvious when we toggle between the interrupts being on and the interrupts being off. So even with the do as capable as it is, and it really actually does a really nice job, this 50 microsecond delay is asking a lot of any microcontroller, um, but it does again show that if you give it enough to do, it has a hard time keeping up. Okay, so that's the do. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the snowboard. Let's do the exact same thing with the snowboard. We'll start with a reset and we'll get it moving through that initialization sequence. And we probably won't watch this all the way through because it's gonna look exactly the same as you've seen with the Mega and with the Do. Let's kind of jump right over to the point where we're adding in the interrupts. Okay, well now that we are out of that subtle position from the first run with no interrupts, let's turn on some interrupts and see what happens. So now with the interrupts on, we can see that there's no jitter happening whatsoever. The servos are nice and steady, nice and controlled. And the reason, of course, for that is that the control is happening. All the PWMs are being generated all out in the accelerator blocks living on the FPGA fabric, and it isn't burdening the AVR controller whatsoever. So even though it's only an 8-bit micro running at 16 megahertz, it has plenty of headroom to be able to do that interrupt service routine, delay that 50 microseconds. It doesn't have anything to do with the timers or going off and dealing with the servos at all and generating those PWMs. So here again, you can see in this subtle position as I toggle it back and forth between off and on, there's no change whatsoever. So the, the snow is just simply not affected by these at all. And keep in mind, it's, it's running all 18 servos at one time. And so just, just another really good demonstration of how easy it is to control a lot of servos from such, such a small compact board like our snowboard. And while we're at it, we might as well have a look at these things running side by side. As you can see, this is during the phase where we're sending interrupts in, obviously, because you can see the twitching and the jitter going on with the do controlled hexi and just nice and steady with the snowboard. Same thing when we take a look at it in this subtle position, very obvious what's going on as the do is trying to respond to those interrupts while well, is responding to those interrupts, but it's affecting the timing going out to the PWMs. And therefore you see that represented as jitter and twitching. Hey, thanks for checking this video out. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different look at how you can benefit from using FPJs to control a whole bunch of servo motors at one time and really the power that it gives you. If you want to learn more about our snowboard, head over to aloriumtech.com slash snow and you can learn more about that platform. There's a bunch of other videos on our YouTube channel. If you want to take a look at those, there's even more examples of good ways to do things where you're controlling motors, reading quadrature encoders, doing PID, all kinds of cool stuff you can do with these very small devices and of course, remain compatible with the Arduino ecosystem, allowing you to program it easily and use it easily in your projects. Until the next time, thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.